Happy holidays, I'm Dr. Larry Bruchette. In this video, I'm gonna give you, talk about six things that I see in the emergency room around the holidays and how you can avoid them. Have you, have you ever heard the term holiday heart? What exactly is that? Turns out it's a real medical thing. I think it was, na it was uh, named in the 70s. <clears throat> but what happens is, somebody who maybe doesn't drink very much or drinks moderately drinks more over the holidays and their heart rate, which is normally, what's a normal heart rate, right? 60, 80, under 100, their heart rate can go 150, 180, 190, and they can get symptoms, shortness of breath, feeling like you're gonna pass out, sometimes chest pain, palpitations, because your heart is racing. What's happening? They're having holiday heart from alcohol. And the alcohol, which is a toxin on your heart, is causing it to beat two things. Irregularly, so instead of beating normally like this, it's like irregularly and super fast. <clears throat> atrial fibrillation, rapid atrial fibrillation, or A flutter, SVT, these are all names of arrhythmias, cardiac arrhythmias, where your heart beats irregularly because you're drinking too much alcohol over the holidays. That's holiday heart. It's a real thing. I see it every holiday season that I'm working in the ER. How do you avoid it? Just moderation. Don't drink too much. Done, right? If you're drinking a lot and you have these symptoms of shortness of breath, palpitations, you can always take your pulse, take two fingers, put it on your thumb side. I want you to find your pulse right now and be able to do that. Whenever you have shortness of breath or you feel like your heart is racing, take your pulse and know about how fast it's going. If it's going so fast that you can't take it, you yeah, need to go to the ER. That's a good reason to be evaluated immediately. There you go, that's holiday heart. Loneliness, this is a real, this is a real thing and this is incredibly sad, but I see in the ER around the holidays, people come in more, especially old folks who are in nursing homes who don't have as much, <clears throat> maybe they don't have somewhere to go, maybe their, their families are gone or, or for whatever reason, and they'll come into the ER, they'll be totally normal. Nothing's really wrong with them, and they're just looking for human contact. They just want to talk to people. I see this kind of all the time, but it really, in my opinion, spikes over the holidays as well. Here's, th this is something else, and this is just sad, but I know all of us in the ER see this. There are some families who take care of, um, have someone that they care for for medical reasons, and they want to break at the holidays, and so they will dump them into the hospital for so many days, five days, a week. Sometimes they take vacations. It's pretty gross, but that happens too. So being aware, <clears throat> why am I telling you this? Be aware around the holidays that, that many people feel increased loneliness, depression, all this stuff. Just keep an eye on people. Think in your mind. Don't be afraid to reach out and, and socially you know, invite people to things and keep an eye on them because loneliness and depression, these things absolutely are harder over the holidays. That's why some people drink. Speaking of those two things, let's talk about athletic injuries that happen during the Turkey Bowl and other various... <clears throat> uh, yeah, but you know, we're, this is we're gonna use this for next Thanksgiving too, for sure. Turkey Bowl is a good example, but, but families often like to get together and throw the football around, whatever. If you're at, you know, at your own risk, of course, if you're athletic. But especially when you're mixing alcohol, you're stuffed with food. Just be careful. We still see a lot of, you know, ankle sprains, fractures. You can break any of these bones, screwing around, having a little bit too much to drink, and we do see this in the ER. Just think prevention when you're doing it and don't do anything stupid. Right, a lot of these things are just like, think about it now that I'm telling you and take preparation. So another one, let's go into the kitchen. There's a couple things I wanna talk about in the kitchen. Kitchen trauma, like cuts and burns, and then food poisoning. Also things that come out of the holidays, right? So. Let's talk about lacerations. When you're cutting stuff, do it in a way, like just be conscious of how you're cutting. And, and the thing is like, when you're cutting stuff, could you potentially slip and, and cut your finger in the motion that you're going? So usually it's cutting away, getting your fingers out of the way. You know, don't be a dumbass. Just cut in a way where you're not gonna hurt your fingers. Now what happens when you do get a laceration? Number one, clean it a little bit. I think tap water in most places is safe. Put pressure on it and see if it stops bleeding. There's two reasons. 
to come in and get stitches or glue and have us put it back together. One would be <clears throat> if it's ongoing bleeding, you come into the ER at any time. But typically, bleeding is going to stop within 30 minutes. It may take a while, but hold pressure, get something, hold pressure there. The sec and if it doesn't and it's still bleeding, come into the ER. Two would be if we need if the, if the cut is so big, it's gaping open. It doesn't look like something that you're going to be able to put neosporin and a band-aid to hold together while it heals. We can put stitches or glue in to bring that and to close that opening. Two reasons for stitches: stop bleeding and to close the opening. Right? You can take care of some of this safely at home. And then I always recommend soap and water to keep it clean. You don't need anything more abrasive like hydrogen peroxide or alcohol or anything like that. Just soap and water and some, some antibiotic ointment like Neosporin, Band-Aid. You're done. Um, let's talk about burns. Again, so much better for that to be prevented just by, you know, mindfulness, by not having certain loose clothing, anything that can catch on fire. The granny burn is, you know, when grandma's piece of clothing happens to catch on fire and then that can that can cause some serious problems <clears throat> when to come into the ER you know my there's first second third degree burns the minor stuff maybe it's got a little blister you can always come for pain medication Tylenol and ibuprofen you can use both of those at home for the average adult without medical conditions 600 of ibuprofen 650 of Tylenol for pain for that If you need more than that you can always come to the ER Typically, <clears throat> for mild burns, when we're not talking like major burns in a fire, your whole body surface, just little things on your fingers, there's not, we, not a lot we do routinely. I routinely don't prescribe antibiotics. If, if somebody needs more than Tylenol ibuprofen, you can get stronger pain medication. Um, but it's usually just keeping it clean. Even if it's a blister, I wouldn't pop the blister. Just let it naturally do what it's going to do. If it happens to open, great. Same thing, just keep stuff clean and keep an eye on it and manage your pain. That's typically how we deal with burns. If they are open, you can put creams on it like Silvadine <clears throat> and follow it closely to watch out for infection. Now, if you're talking about more serious burns, like third degree burns or more extensive, you know, greater than so much uh, percent of your body or major part of your hand, face, etc., I would go to the ER for that for sure to, to, to be more evaluated. Let's talk about food poisoning for a minute. This happens um, frequently uh, over the holidays. You know, step one is make sure your food is thoroughly cooked. If you're doing a turkey, that it's at the right temperature for the right amount of time. When you're storing stuff, remember food doesn't last forever. <laughs> uh, just be aware of how long it's in there. People often will, especially for the stuff with creams and the things that the food poisoning starts earlier as opposed to something like the broccoli that's just sitting in there alone. Uh, just be careful because that can turn into food poisoning at some point. This is a common one that I see with people who have problems with fluid and swelling, and this is very preventable and predictable, but if you have heart failure, if you have liver disease and your legs swell, what happens is over Thanksgiving and Christmas, folks will eat a high salt meal. And what happens, your body likes to keep the salt and the water balanced. And so if you increase the amount of salt that you take in, like when you eat steak and salty fries and, and uh, uh, mashed potatoes and like a lot of the common things we really like over the holidays, fried stuff, salt goes up. And so your body says, okay, we want to balance that out. And it, it holds on to fluid to balance it out. And so people who have heart failure, kidney failure who have swelling problems, they blow up over the holidays. So predictably, and they don't come in on Thanksgiving, so they'll eat the meal on Thanksgiving or Christmas, and then a day or two later, especially if it's a weekend holiday, like predictably on the Monday, Tuesday, we see the heart failure patients, the folks with swelling, they come in all bloated. Sometimes they have to be admitted to the hospital to get all of that fluid off, that it is the result of basically eating a high salt meal. So. If you are some of these folks that swell, be very careful with the salt content of what you eat so that you don't end up in the, in the ER. I'm working the holiday this year. I will absolutely see some heart failure and liver, liver failure patients who will swell because they eat too much salt. Please prevent that. There you go. This is our summary on how you can stay out of the ER. Holiday heart. Be careful of moderate alcohol intake. 
<clears throat> keep an eye on those who may be lonely. In the kitchen, be safe with cutting and burns. Make sure your food is thoroughly cooked. Don't let, don't eat it too long after. Be aware of food poisoning and be careful with that salt intake. I hope you have a lovely holiday and we'll see you next time.